What is decolonising universities? What's involved in that? Well, it involves a range of different things. So people probably know it most for um, the campaign to remove the statue or to recontextualise the statue of Cecil Rhodes at Oxford University. But I think that this is actually a really good example of of another dimension of decolonisation, which is about not just looking at symbols or or not just about renaming things and not just about, you know, making people feel guilty for the past, but it's actually about looking at the kind of material injustice that colonialism was and colonialism and slavery that can very much be quantified. And it's about doing better by knowing better and everyone and sort of moving forward, you know, in order to kind of heal those past things, we need to take decisive action and i think that what cambridge is doing now is a really good move a step and step forward and is something that i'd actually like to see for many more institutions of britain as well dahlia it's dawn neeson here talking Hi. hiya uh, do you think that anyone actually thinks in today's world that slavery was or is a good idea well I, obviously i don't think that people i mean we've had you know um, we learn about slavery a lot, We kind of, um, but we don't really learn about Britain's involvement in slavery. And I don't think that that's really the point. I think it's more about having a kind of sober and some, sometimes uncomfortable but necessary understanding of how slavery is not just a thing of the past. It's something that has a legacy today. So one example would be things that we think about as being, you know, very typically British, um, like the Industrial Revolution, this was something that was very much connected to slave wealth. When um, Britain abolished slavery, there was the equivalent of, I think it was maybe the equivalent of like 60 billion pounds was raised by the government as compensation, not for the slaves for their lack of freedom, but to slave owners. And a lot of that wealth that was gained from that compensation from slavery then financed the Industrial Revolution. But, but I think so what, I think the point that Dawn... Understand uh, yeah, but I think the point that Dawn is, is making is no one will say slavery was or is a good thing. So what is to be benefited? Why don't we all just accept that was awful, that was terrible, but Mm. that was then, this is Mm. now? Well, I think because it has impacts in the modern day. So when we look globally, you know, we see that there is a globally uneven distribution of wealth. We can see, and oftentimes we kind of throw chalk this up to kind of bad management or randomness about why, you know, certain parts of the world seem to experience more conflict, seem to experience more poverty. And I would argue, and and in fact, a lot of scholars of international relations and political economy would argue that there's a direct connection between those colonial histories and that, you know, in a lot of these countries where we are seeing these kind of conflicts and poverty are countries that were affected negatively by colonialism and slavery. So it's all about... And what never got got over it in in, in all that time they've never got over it well i guess it's when you have a kind of material and political injustice that happens at one point in history that never gets materially addressed you know getting over it's not just a mental thing it's also a financial process it's a political process and the scars are still present because we've never made a real concerted effort to come together and collectively address it so, but, but as I said, no one thinks slavery is a good thing. But why, why are we beating ourselves up, all of us, about something that happened in the past? Why don't we now just learn from the past and move on together to make things better? I don't understand why I'm constantly made to feel guilty for slavery and colonialism. Why do we need to investigate how much they've invested in Cambridge University or how much it's benefited from it? Why wouldn't, why don't you just open your doors and say, here are a lot of free scholarships from people, for people from the yes. third world? Well, I think that that's what the point of the investigation is. It's to see how those inequalities are embedded in the structure of Cambridge University. And when they talk about reparative justice, they talk about looking at that level of wealth that was taken from slaves without, you know, that was stolen from the labour of slaves and saying, how can we redistribute that now? For example, through creating a centre to study empire, through raising our collective awareness. But but why do you want to study empire? What you really want to do is malign empire. Isn't that what you want to do? Well, I think we need to study the full, the full scope of empire, which we've we've looked at empire through rose tinted glasses. And I think it, we need to sort of soberly and academically and maturely um, look at the full 
look at the full picture and look at the fact that slavery and that colonial slavery was part of colonialism to begin with and that colonialism was a political and material injustice it didn't give people the right to decide their own fate it didn't give people the right to decide who ran their own countries Do you know and the material benefits you know i'm listening to you all, all i'm going to say to you dahlia is people. i mean not not that anything you're saying is wrong I'm just saying to you, where does it get us? Because, you know, being Irish, I can believe me, the fact that people just constantly look backwards and Mm. uh, have remorse about everything that happened in the past. You know, I live in a country that can't move forward for looking backwards. Mm. So that's all I'm saying to you. I I, I, I understand that. But I think in order to move forward, you have to repair the wounds of past. You know, when, when you have an argument with someone, when you have a conflict with someone, there has to be a conversation, there has to be a reckoning of the pain that was caused before you can move forward. I don't think it's fair to have this huge material injustice that has in very physical, real, bricks and mortar terms, disadvantaged huge swathes of the global population and just tell them to move on. I think you have to Make, you have to kind of put your money where your mouth is. It's not, it's not just a mental moving on. It also involves quite material and quite real processes of so, so is it about money at the end of the day? Is it about getting Cambridge on its knees and say, yes, we were wrong, we benefited to this tune and you're going to take a load of dosh off them to reinvest in, in, in something else? Is, that what is, is it about getting even? I think it's about re- redistributing the wealth in a fairer way. So at the moment... This the is what, is sorry, Dalia, to interrupt, but I don't understand. I, I get the that they are building a centre to help people to study, but redistributing the wealth, where apart from that? Tracking well, down slave about, families and giving it to them? Is well, that... if, we're talking, if we're talking about Cambridge specifically, as I said before, reparative justice can look like many different ways, and it's about redistributing the resources to help the communities, to help the education, to help the kind of um, gain a greater, fuller understanding so that we can have maybe a kind of educational or a cultural reparative justice. Uh, And I I don't think that that's an unreasonable thing. I totally to understand that, that what happened in, in, in on the whole was bad. I don't think the empire was all bad. I think it did good things for people as well. And I think we are trying now, as Eamon said earlier on, to do that down. However, I do think this constant navel gazing at the past and beating ourselves up is very divisive. And I, I think things like this study are, are actually alienating swathes of the population now and I think you know all the time we are looking back at the past and blaming ourselves for things we can't do anything about now realistically we can't I mean we could build centres there are absolutely things that we can do for example I mean I could talk about it in the specific context of Cambridge University I could also talk about it in a global sense about things that we can do for example and it might not seem explicitly connected but this is an example of why it's important to recognise and understand the past in order to move forward So think about the conversations that we're having about climate change right now. The fossil fuel industry is a direct descendant of colonialism. It's a direct extractive industry that comes from colonialism. The countries that are suffering from climate change the most are countries of the global south, countries that were colonised. So moving forward, we have to understand how that inequality has has come about to, for example, invest in helping those countries that had very little to do with climate change in helping to defend their societies from the impacts of climate change. So that's an example of how reparative justice can happen in a way that's not navel-gazing, but is actually addressing very real material conditions. What's that got to do with mining coal in Yorkshire? Just sort of to tell me, or Nottinghamshire, or whatever. What's... I I failed to get the connection here. I, I understand... The, the, the third world countries are suffering from climate change, but I don't understand how mining coal in Yorkshire is is connected directly. Well, well, the, the extraction of oil and gas has disproportionately happened in the global south. With slaves? Hasn't. Well, through colonialism, through imperialism. So that is that is the historical origin and through contemporary see, colonial formations as well. Well, do you see what happens, Danny? I think what happens now, you lose people here. People go, this is completely unreasonable. Mm, people people I, are like Dawn and they say, that think, this slavery is awful, this was terrible, this is, there's I lots of things think, people should do. But you sitting, you sitting doing this and undertaking a two-year study, so for what? For what reason? So what I would actually say is, first of all, You know, I grew up in communities of people that are, you know, communities descended from the Windrush, from, you know, ex-colonial countries. 
And this is, these are conversations that we've always had. That was my education, you know. So there's actually lots of communities. When you diversify what you think of as people, there are actually lots of people that talk about this, that understand it, that it's common sense. But a lot of those I, people don't I want think, to be defined in 2019 as being slaves, do they? Or, but I don't, think, I don't think that understanding your history means restrains you from... But people understand ...what that. you consider in the present. I don't think... I think okay. it's a very strange idea that to reckon with the past, to understand the past Where does it end? we can't move forward or we Where can't understand end? the present. If that's the situation, then what's the point of studying history at all? And well, history, you, know, you can history easily study history and understand it. It doesn't mean to say you all have to put your hand in your pocket and you say everything you've created as a result of that, you now have to tear down and, and redistribute Rewrite throughout the world. Because I doubt if Cambridge I mean, University I, I, or all I, I these other institutions that, that you intend to investigate we, um, will be able to do all of that. We are arguing that history is told from multiple perspectives. Any historian will tell you that. We have heard the history of empire from one perspective, the perspective of the colonizer. It is scholarly, it is intellectually dishonest to pretend that there are no other perspectives of empire. And the point of the decolonizing education campaign is to add to our understanding, it's to enrich, it's not to tear down, it's to build up different institutions, new institutions that take a much more rigorous look at our history. Because I you know what? That, that, that I think, Dali, a lot feelings, of people would say you're an academic feelings, and you're not in the real world. Feelings, people's feelings are getting in the way of us having a sober look at our history. Yeah, but are they and not your feelings before, getting in the way? My feelings aren't. I'm, it's a very painful history for me, and I want to confront it, and I want to understand it, and I want to learn about it. It's the feelings of people who don't like the fact that there are some parts of, of history that might not be comfortable, that might not show us in the best light. So we want to pretend it didn't happen. But we know we that. We, we know it happened. I accept it happened. Yeah. I'm very uncomfortable about it, but I don't know what I can do now about it. I understand we it. We don't. We don't, we don't know what happened. I studied history until A-level, and I studied, spent a year studying 19th century British politics. The word empire was not mentioned a single time, even though it was probably the single biggest part of British politics. Well, I only did history to O-level, and we, we, we learned about the empire. And what I'm saying, and, and in terms of people just thinking I'm an academic, as I said before, these are oral histories that have been passed down by members of my family that didn't go to university. This is normal speak amongst a lot of communities in this country, a lot of the Windrush migrants that we've been talking about who know, who know of these histories and talk about those histories with pride, with sadness, with sorrow, with all different kinds of feelings. This isn't stuck to the academic sphere. This is about the real well, this life. This is stuff that opens people. wounds between communities. You know, the people will be very accepting of the, the communities that you have and vice versa, and everybody mixes together and everybody wants to move on. And what you're doing, mm. surely, you have to be open to the accusation that you're opening lots of old mm. wounds on things I that think... you're making people feel really bad mm. for something that they had absolutely no mm. say or no hand I in, have... nor indeed would they endorse so in, in this I present think, day. I think, first of all, I think that... What what make what opens up wounds for me is being told to move on from something that happened hundreds of years ago. On. No, that the world still hasn't moved on. That the impacts of that reality are still shaping All the way right. our world is considered today. Okay. So I think I think the idea of moving on is a two way street, isn't it? It's not just something for me to do. It's something for us to be collectively involved in. And I also want to just get one point in really quickly. Yeah. This isn't about making people feel guilty at all. It's about enriching our understanding of things, enriching our understanding of the present, and together creating a better world. Because ultimately, a more equal world, a more just world, is better for all of us. But what about the slave so, trade that goes um, on in Africa and Arabia and to this very day? Yeah. I mean, I, of course, that's total, And that's also like a legacy of injustices that have happened historically. And that's, I don't think that there's any contradiction between wanting to understand... Do you know um, what I think? I think we'd be better off concentrating on stopping today. slavery today mm. than maybe do it, doing all this. But, Dali, I appreciate your opinion, appreciate what you're trying to do. 